What's up, everybody? Pumpkin here. So, Dana, um, basically, with this patch, Francesca got two extra P, and everybody was screaming that Dana is unplayable now because Francesca's just a better Dana because you could play call twice, and that's just better than Dana. Uh, it turns out it's not actually true. Uh, in some cases, Dana is actually better than Francesca. Uh, the consistency is quite nice. Um, I would say Francesca is better when you draw all your gold cards, uh, and that typically doesn't happen because... Well, at least it doesn't happen for me. So uh, maybe maybe you play Francesca and you draw super duper well, in which case it's fine. Um, but I've been having a lot of success with uh, Dana. And she's really good at bleeding, which is very important in this meta. Uh, so yeah, before you uh, jump on the Reddit train and complain about Dana and she's unplayable and she's a garbage Calanthe, uh, she's actually pretty good. Uh, we'll go through the deck. Uh, so water is obviously a staple in most Squiatel decks. Same thing with Justice. Uh, same thing with Call. These three cards are going to be seen in basically every Squiatel deck. Um, I guess I'll mention why I don't play Oak. Oak's not great in a bleed round, um, unless it's a really long bleed round, but typically it's not. Usually you go maybe four to five cards deep into round one. Um, <clears throat> so you're not playing like a ten card round two bleed. Uh, and Oak's really only good... <clears throat> If you draw call, because you can't pull it with uh, Dana, and it's typically not necessary. Uh, it also gives people a heat wave target because, well, heat wave is in a lot of decks, and yeah, you don't really want to do that. Same goes for invocation, <clears throat> Ithlin. So, uh, I've talked about Ithlin Skags in the past. I've typically have not been a fan of it just because it's too draw dependent. If you don't draw Skags until round three, it's pretty bad. If you don't draw Skags at all, it's really really bad. Um, but Call of the Forest kind of fixes that. Uh, call into Skags is a five. That does five, which is really good in this meta because five is harder to come by. Uh, it's a nice tempo play. Yeah, it's not too shabby. So with the change to call, I'm actually a fan of running Skags now. Uh, if you do draw Skags in your opening hand, it's really, really good. Uh, Immune Dragon. This is probably one of the weaker cards in the deck just because we don't really have control decks at the moment. Uh, it is still very good against decks like Ardle. Uh, and it is a nice proactive play in a any round, I suppose. Uh, and it's good for water. And it's for the uh, an extra tick on uh, Dana. I should say you can pull 11 with this. Barnabas, really nice uh, tempo swing card if you have uh, the three targets. Yeah, it's just a good card. Very rarely is it bad. Uh, if you have water, it's even more. It can get up to like 14, 15, 16 points, uh, depending on how many harmony cards you have on the board. Malayan, good removal. Skags, really good card if you draw it in round one. If you don't draw it, you can call it, which is not too shabby. Weeping Willow. Uh, Weeping Willow is really good because it's another Treant, which procs Harmony. Uh, on top of that, it has Poison. Poison's actually pretty good this meta. We're in kind of a tall meta with Hyper Thin. Uh, Monsters is playing like Spear Tip and Goliath. Uh, yeah, Weeping Willow is good. Milva is kind of a staple in every Dana deck. It's a human. And yeah, Squirtle card gets value the longer the round. Treant Mantis Stock. So this card's a little dicey. I do run a lot of poison in the deck, so Tree and Mantis stock typically finds value. Um, it's not great. It, it's it, This would be one of the first cards I cut from the deck, so if, you, if you're not a fan of this card, which I can completely understand, uh, you easily replace it with either Half-Elf Hunter or Smuggler. I wouldn't suggest a second crushing. I think two crushings is overkill. The time where this card shines is a short round three, because typically your opponent's only going to have gold cards. Uh, so in a short round three, Tree and Mantis is quite good. Uh, in a long round, like in the middle of a round, it's pretty bad because, I mean, I've gone over this, but basically, uh, most traps you play are going to be like Pitfall or Incinerating, and typically people are going to play low bronzes into that, and if they're playing a low bronze into it, then poisoning it and executing it with a second poison is pretty bad, so, yeah, not great, but it's okay, it's proactive, yeah, it's alright, it makes a cut, uh, if you really hate the card, you can sub either of these two cards in. Crushing Trap, good in a long round. Uh, it's very good against Francesca because Francesca roast stacks really aggressively, uh, and Ida got nerfed. She no longer removes artifacts, which means in that matchup, this is always sticking because they're not going to run neutral artifact removal. Uh, muscle is for the singular justice. I should say playing Marauder is also pretty good with justice just because it is a 10-point play. It's technically a 9, but they're usually not going to kill the 5. Uh, and if you have another Marauder in hand, it's actually correct because that next Marauder is going to be 8 value, so... Uh, if you get into like round three and you have justice in your hand and you've drawn a marauder and you have another marauder in your deck, there's a good chance that justice into marauder is going to be better than cleaver muscle. Uh, the exception would be against SK with random pings with cards like Harold Houndsnout. Yeah. Uh, poison, poison, very good in this meta. Uh, one of the nice reasons 
that Dana is good is because you can play two poisons in one turn and kill a card, uh, which is really good on Tempo Swing. Uh, a lot of the times, your opponent's going to play some large card to try to keep up with you, uh, and you'll just smash it while gaining tempo while buffing your other Harmony cards. It's just really good. Um, Panther, really good card with Water simply because he's the only beast in your deck, and yeah, you play this card. If you have Water on the board, it's a 9 for 5. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Marauders are a really strong bronze card for Soyatel now because, while well, they're proactive plays. Yeah, they're proactive. Uh, and if you have the, both of them in your hand, the second one's going to be a lot of points. Swordmaster, nice engine. Yeah. Uh, Dwarven Agitator is a pretty decent card. Uh, it really shines on Skags. Obviously, if you don't have it on Skags, you're probably going to throw it on something like Marauder or Muscle. I wouldn't... I uh, advise to put it on Muscle just because you can't usually play that Muscle that round because you'll brick on, like, your Justice, but... I suppose you always have the backup with Marauder, so it's not the end of the world. Uh, yeah, so basic game plan with this deck is to win round one uh, and then bleed round two. Um, whether or not you use your leader in round two is dependent on what kind of deck you're going to play against. Um, sometimes it's not necessary. Sometimes it, it's really hard to know, I guess. You just have to judge the situation. Um, but a lot of the times I'll use my leader in round two for something like either water or uh, justice just because... You really want to push. Uh, if you're against monsters, uh, they're typically running Goliath Spear Tip, so you might want to hold on to your leader for a poison. Yeah, I mean, you should really just count how many poison you have in your hand. If it's an odd number, then there's a decent chance that you're going to be playing your leader for poison, with the exception for uh, stock. Stock doesn't count as poison. Ah, actually, against monster, it can count because if they're playing large cards and you drop a stock and it does actually connect to one of those larger units. Uh, you'll probably actually just win the game. Um, so I, I guess you could count it, but don't bank on it, I guess. Uh, yeah, I have some gameplay for you guys. Hope you guys enjoy the deck guide. Definitely give Dana a try if you think that she's complete garbage because she'll surprise you. She's much better than you think. Uh, and without further ado, let's get right into the gameplay. Really good opening hand. We'll just draw the poison later. Dana has a nice load screen. Yeah, because she's a new leader. All the uh, Thornbreaker leader, uh, not Thornbreaker. Is it Thornbreaker? All the new leaders look good. Because they have better models. Right, it seems like the older leaders who have older models aren't as nice. We're not going to win this round, which is fine. Meave looks meh. Okay, except for Meave is a Papilla. Meave is like an old grandmother. Hey Techies, how are you? <laughs> so I might change my mind on Sheldon Skaggs. I have a very, yeah, deep love-hate relationship with this card. But, because Call exists now, he might be okay. Because worst case scenario, five with five removal is actually not that bad. Especially because five removal is not something you come by very often. So, yeah, might have to change my mind on that one. Dude, all right, I just need to make sure if he passes, I can actually catch up. Because, holy shit. So, if you're gonna play Calvite and play Hyperthin, you never wanna- If you lose coin flip and your opponent's playing Papiga, like opener, you never wanna open up with Portal and Vigo. You typically wanna save one for round two when you bleed. But this is obviously very good for me. I just need to not lose the game if he passes. Uh, but we should be fine. I don't mind blowing all of this. So we'll play our lowest bronze. Nice tempo. Yeah, but I lost coin flips. So I don't need tempo. He's not even thinking about the potential pass. 
We just pass here. We're done. My my long round three is better because of poison. <laughs> really enjoying your vampire. So hard to pick out of the three. I mean, they're all very similar, right? So, I would say definitely you want to play Heat Wave. Uh, TK. I don't know. I'm still messing around with TK. I, I'm not necessarily sold on her yet. Um, having the Flex Thunder is kind of useful. But there's not a lot of Northern Realms where that card would shine. So, eh. It's insane in SK, but like if it's only for Thunder, it's kind of meh. Uh, probably drop a Panther here. I mean, we're looking for a Dragon and Poison. Wet Observer doesn't show Dana Provisions number. Oh. I mean, does it really matter? The Empire I, I mean, yeah, I, I guess. Not. Oriana's a really good card. Yeah, Oriana's very, very good now. Say it in that you mean. Typically, these decks want to play till 7 and then get out. Which means... I don't think I need to commit the Milva, because he already blew the majority of his tempo. Is the time of the white I think I want to save the Morin for lock on Helgi. Actually, no, these decks don't play Helgi. Only the Ardol variants do. But I'll still hold on to it. Trying Dragon Fran is decent with the Bork buff. Yeah, tall removal in general is just good, which means XD is almost always going to find value. Right, Geralt very rarely doesn't find value, which means XD is just a better variant, right? Assuming you can consistently pull it off, and in Scoia'tael you can, so, yeah. I like this, catches up. This way if he passes, I don't have to expend any card in my hand. And it's always going to be a pass. People on Reddit are complaining about new voice lines. I... Whatever. Who cares? It's Reddit. We have Quad Poison. Well, leader for call into dragon. I don't want to mulligan again. Hitting that justice is bad. Okay, quad poison should be fine. Uh, we don't roast stack because we don't have oak. I trust no one. Never have. Why not play Sasuke instead? Because Sasuke is still bad. And immunity is still very strong. Sasuke needs a rework. Obviously. Alright, Pavko is almost always just better. I think we have Water Dragon here. We're not going to want Crushing Trap. Even if he roast stacks to back row. Oh, we're just going to be going trap. ham on the poison. <laughs> What up? Zeph Lucri, thank you so much for the eight months. What up, mate? We're playing uh, some Poison Dana, which is definitely interesting, to say the least. That dragon's good. You guys realize we're gonna get an expansion at the end of the month? Three, two and a half months is going by really quick. That's the beauty of Reddit complaining about DJ and full test for an entire month. Time goes by faster. <laughs> Cause that's all they're talking about. Uh. I wanna put these down here. I wanna play around left, right. You're lucky if you get 
this month. Well, yeah, if you, let's, let's think about it. Novigrad came out, the expansion. Uh, we had the Syndicate meta, which was oppressive with Bounty. That was one month, right? And then we had last month, which was the NR rework, with uh, Full Test and DJ being Tier 1, and Reddit complaining about that for an entire month. And now we're in month 3. And we got the recent changes, and at the end of this month should be an expansion, right? Uh, we'll probably start seeing leaks at Challenger. I mean, he has a removal, but whatever. Get plus one. Too soon for expansion? Yeah, I feel like we just got an expansion, right? I was thinking about this a little earlier this morning when I was making breakfast. This patch just now was a bigger change for the game than the Novigrad expansion. Right? So, the rationale is Novigrad expansion, all we got for non-Novigrad, or non-Syndicate, we got three cards per faction. This recent update, we reworked unplayable cards. So, in terms of expanding playable cards, we got more playable cards in this last patch than the actual expansion two and a half months ago. Which means this last patch had a bigger impact on the game than the Syndicate patch did. Which is crazy. It's kind of weird to think about. You farted? Nice. Congrats. The wilds shall reclaim your fields. Happy with the last patch? Yeah, I really like the last patch. It's really good. Every faction has playable decks other than Syndicate, which is good. I wonder if they're going to buff Syndicate next patch. Pretty bad poison, but like, he's not playing any big cards. Can we time this out? So Yen, Zarth, Vilgi. Yeah, so we just slam Skag's next turn. And then he has three big cards. Oh, he has Invocation too. So his hand is Invocation, Zarthisius, Yen, Vilgaforts. Those are his four cards every time. Quite the mean task. It's kind of annoying. Because if I play Skaggs here, he just plays Invocation, and then I'm poisoning, and I'm losing value on Skag. So the correct play here is to Poison, which is really annoying, but I don't have a choice. That is all I need. Isn't this technically better? Yeah. Because he's going to rip Barnabas and put it on the Dryad. So this is technically a 6 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. So his hand is Zarth and Invo. Should be a win. Pretty big point slam. Oh, it's a different trap. <laughs> Deep Dark Boy, thank you so much Late for the eight months. Or nine months, sorry. Reading is hard. Late stream Omega lol. This is pretty big. We should win. Invocation is 6, 12... Twelve. Okay. Eleven plus six. Are agitators worth it? They're worth it when you draw them and not round three. Mm, 
This is a matchup where I'd prefer Crushing. I don't know. They're, like, Crushing versus Mantis, there's pros and cons in each. Can't win the round if I don't play this. Top decks from each faction. Hyperthin, Nilfgaard, Calvita is the best form of Nilfgaard at the moment. Scoia'tael right now is Francesca. It might be Dana, but it needs some more uh, testing. Um, Northern Island's best deck is Full Test. Best deck in Monsters is Detlaf. Possibly AQ, depending on the meta. Best deck in Syndicate is Concede Syndicate. And what's the other faction? SK. Best SK deck is Foulblood. Full test is better than Meave. Yeah, this combo is still degenerate. What if I do this? I mean, he has to play the other from hand. If I kill it, it denies it. Regroup. I don't know. It's an interesting idea. Card's pretty dead in the matchup. Go ahead and play it now. Do I hear Tycho? You do. Voltest still broken? I wouldn't say he's broken. He's, I'd say he's insane. He's not breaking the game. He's just really good. Because the, the, the combo at the end is still broken. Have they said when the hotfix for Syndicate will drop? Didn't they say later this week? For the coins? Okay. Why isn't Puffball played in any poison deck? Because it's contingent on your opponent being bad. Because your opponent can just put units in between. Or you can play Bruver, but then you're losing points on poison. It's just not worth it. The, the sad thing is, the guy hasn't even played his points yet. Whenever he plays the commandos, we just lose the game. I think you really like this one. Would River be better if he didn't damage buff but had movement charges? Oh, more movement charges. Um... It's potentially problematic with, um... Brigade. I don't know. This combo is kind of annoying. Zero counterplay kind of... <laughs> makes it frustrating. Do we know he has one of these in hand? How much is Sabrina worth? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's a two. Ten, eleven, plus three. Fourteen. Oh, I didn't count this, but it doesn't really change anything. And he has to have Sabrina in hand. The odds of him having Sabrina and Drog in his hand is kind of unlikely. Expansion may come with mobile. I highly doubt it. Yeah. 
The reason why I highly doubt it is because typically one is they're both going to come with their set of bugs and stacking bugs on top of bugs is too many bugs. So no, my guess would be expansion at the end of the month and then mobile comes like a month later. I don't know. Dragon is worth 11. This reset is worth four, seven, 48. I mean, his last card is Commando. I don't know. I guess we just force it out of him. Because the issue is, like, if I don't get it out this round, he just smashes me next round. He just twos me. It also forces him to use a full test charge, which is pretty good. And it forces him to top deck Pavetta or Royal Decree. If he doesn't top deck Pavetta or Royal Decree, he's kind of in trouble. You have a trap? No, I don't. I don't have Crushing Trap. I cut Crushing Trap for Mantis Trap. Nice mess you've got here. The upside is we have a leader. He only has two charges. This is a nice catch-up if he plays Pavetta. If he dry passes, we need a play, which will be that. Why? Because against Nilfgaard, Mantis Trap is better. Because you can time the Zarthusius. I don't know. In short rounds, Mantis Trap is really good. And like a three card round three, it's quite good. Yeah. There's a Pavetta. Okay. The problem is, I mean, what are the odds you drew Royal Decree and Pavetta off the top? There's no way. I mean, if you did, we lose, but. That's some insane draws to pull that off. Okay, cool. We go to round three on even, but I still have leader. He has one tick of leader. We're looking for... Skags. I'm... No. Oh, hi, Skags. Um... Ithlin, poison. So we're gonna combo this with leader and the dryad to knock something off, and then we're gonna call the Ithlin. That's our line of play onto the skags. But we need these to tick early, so we have to open with these. Oh, Didn't you say some time ago the skags blows? Yeah, but with the call chains, he's worst case 10 for 10 with five Stand removal, which is pretty significant. Point. So. He, he's less draw dependent. The reason I hate Skaggs is because if you don't draw well, he's just really bad. But uh, with the change to call, he's okay now. I think. Do these decks play Trebs? No, but they do play Sabrina. So I should be playing around Sabrina to an extent. Right, come on. Who's fast? Nice Skaggs. Yeah, he'll be okay. He's not bad. Yeah, Nilfgaard Soldiers need some love. Spies need some love. I re I- okay. If there's anything out of this expansion that I would like, I'd like to see dragons. I want to make a dragon deck. They need to print some bronze dragons and then more cards like XD that synergize with dragons. If they can do that, I'd be so happy. If they put these cards in Syndicate, I'd be very mad though. That would be frustrating. <laughs> Are we ever getting taller than a six? I think we kill this. Uh, we play the fledge the ranger first. One arrow. That is all I need. Because I want the ranger to get buffed, whereas the oak getting buffed is not as important. Alright. Also, playing this early means I get 
uh, extra points on the Ithlin. Where normally I'd play the Ithlin first, so I save a point, which is pretty nice. Triple sevens. Is that bad? Hmm. I mean... Is full test that gonna run Gigney? I... No. I, the reason I don't want to play it front is because then I'm quad stacking on front, whereas if I play it on the back, I don't have to quad stack. I can just triple triple. You don't lose to Sabrina? Yeah, that's a fair point. Whereas I do lose to Gigney, so I'll play around the Gigney. I think we win. I mean, Commando- Oh, okay. Commandos are still a card. Commando is still worth a shit ton. Yeah. Wait. Is this your pull? I mean, I'm assuming you have Royal Decree in your hand and that's just a bait. It's still correct to kill, though. Yeah. Okay, how much is this? I don't think it's 25. Wow. All right. Easy peasy. I think the key to that game was pushing that final card and losing on even. That's the reason we won. Because otherwise, I, he would have bled me in round two and I would have lost. The way you beat Francesca is wide damage, which I don't have. So... We have to 2-0 Francesca. How hard can it be? Kappa! Was introducing new faction early sensible? I hope CDPR does not introduce a new expansion for another year. I, I think Novigrad expansion is a very clear indicator. People don't... I mean, okay, I can only speak for myself, but... In my opinion, expansions... Should be focused on expanding existing archetypes, not adding new factions. If they want to add a new faction, that's fine. But they better have another 100 cards to go along with it. Which obviously is too much to ask, which is why I think they should just focus on adding cards to existing factions. I do not want to see another faction for a while. Right, I talked about this a little earlier today, but... This last patch, where they took a bunch of useless cards that were seeing zero play and reworked them, had a bigger impact on the meta, or a, a more positive impact on the meta, than an entire expansion of Novigrad. And it makes sense because the entire expansion of Novigrad, each faction got three new cards. Whereas this last patch, factions got like five to ten new cards to work with. Right, so I really hope they don't do another faction for a while. At least, at least two regular expansions first. So I understand why they need to do it sooner than later, right? Uh, you want to do factions earlier on just because, let's say, three expansions from now, they add 20 new cards for each faction. Each faction has, I don't know, how many, how many cards does each faction have? Too many. Not too many, but a lot. Um, once you start having a ton, it's much harder to add new factions, right? Right, so like Hearthstone would never be able to add a new class to the game because it's not feasible. You, you would have to add way too many cards. Introducing new factions late will require a ton of cards. Do we need more factions? Honest question. Do we need more than six factions? Is six not enough? Like, do we really need more factions? I would rather just six factions that are balanced than nine factions where three of the factions are unplayable and one of them is breaking the game. 
Right? Because every faction they add, it's just... It's going to be harder for CDPR to balance. Right? And it's going to be harder to make new cards. Right? I Honestly, I think they should just stick to the six. Or, or, or kill Syndicate and add, like, Zircania instead. And then stop. No more. But, like, I, I don't... I don't think we need more than six. I think it's fine. I don't think trying to copy or imitate Hearthstone and do nine is correct. If they want to do it, they need to do it all at once. I think we're passing here. Kappa. I'm not passing here. You gotta go deeper. Daisies stand tall. Dead one push you high. Right? If they really want to do more factions, they need to do three factions all at once. Just pop out three new factions next month. Easy peasy. Balance will be shit. And then they can balance it over the next month. So, like, just do three at once. And then you can spend two months balancing them. But I really don't want to see another faction over an expansion. Really don't want to. Think we need more specific archetypes inside factions? Yeah, guess what? Guess how we get that? We add new factions to the- or not new factions. Don't add new factions. We add existing cards to the game. Or not existing. I can't speak. We add... Expansions actually expand existing factions. How much is this? 4, 6, 10, 11. This is worth, what? 12, 13, 14, 29. Yeah, it's enough. Hard to do math. And talk to chat. Old Papiga? Yeah, 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 whatever. Just expansions, focus on expansing, expanding current factions. No more new factions. We don't need them. Okay. Keep going deeper. Deeper the better. Expansing, yes. Do you think the dual faction card experiment was successful? Um, in the sense that the meta would have, or the expansion would have been less underwhelming if they had decided to not do that. Uh, I think it's, I think it's very important that they did have the dual cards just so that the other factions actually got something new. Um, so in that sense, sure. Should they add more dual cards in the future? Eh, probably not. Right? I mean... How many Syndicate decks are running Sakras or Laboida? Zero. So, I would say just stick to... It's also harder to balance. I, I would say just stick to non-dual. I, 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 I mean, yeah, we're a few points behind. He blew a good chunk of cards. Uh, the reason, okay, him playing this card so late kind of indicates that he doesn't have Skags. Because if I were in his shoes, I would have played Ithlin before Barnabas 100% of the time. That's the way I see it. Now, I could be very wrong, but... That's the logic I'm going to go with. Ah, uh, there's a good chunk of golds. Keep looking. Or at least Justice is very successful. Yeah, so I can't complain. Squayatel of all the factions got the best three cards added. Because all three of them are playable. Muscle is very good with Justice. Uh, and then Gord is good in a Friendship deck. Now, Friendship isn't very good. However, it can get better in the future. He's just going to smash me, isn't he? Yay. This is where Crushing Trap would be very useful. Having having water not in deck is kind of bad. I'd prefer water in this. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I was right. So you didn't have Skags.
boss the fledglings? Hey. Shh. Oak. Skags. Okay. They just keep getting bigger, you know? Ay, ay, ay. Did he really draw oak too? Yeah, he drew pretty well. If he has oak in hand. Now is the time of the white frost and white light. We're okay as long as well, it depends on what his last card is, right? Oh, we're fine. Easy win. We win. My top deck should be better. He's blown everything, whereas I still have Dragon. And Call. And Poison. If we don't draw, like, super shit, we should win this game. That's good with this. That's good. No, bad. That's good. Okay, that's good. Pog Champ. I mean, we should win. My card quality should be better. So, what's my line here? If he has immunity, like, yeah, yeah, okay. It's not Shoop, so I don't need to worry about that. So we always open this to play around any damage. This forces him to have a proactive play. Then we play Mantis, and then we determine whether or not we want to finish it. Okay. Ida's not a card we have to worry about because Ida got nerfed. Okay, that's not a card we want to poison. Haha! <laughs> got him. Yeah, I was kind of banking on my opponent passing too fast. It's kind of nice. Uh, technically, we play this first. We get an extra point. Because most people, like, for traps, like, this is... Most people don't play around this. Alright, well, I mean, we're up a few. He has no skags. He gets plus one on this. Dana is better than Francesca. Pog champ. Look at that. Do you think Phila could be a strong leader? No. Being forced to auto lose round one and go into round two is really bad. Like the whole strategy of playing three cards and passing, like it's the correct way to play the deck. It's just a really shitty strategy because you just like your opponent can see your fill of Andro and they just play high tempo and then you lose. You lose uneven, you get blood and game over. They need to rework Phila's ability. Double poison. You go pretty deep with this hand. He had Peter, let's be real, you couldn't win if you had Oriana. I mean, he got a pretty big reset with that Peter. He got a plus six reset on the yoink. But yeah. Time for hyper pile. Oh, hyper thin? We could play hyper thin. I don't know if I want to water in round one. I do want to kind of push pretty deep.
Nah. Not gonna commit to it. Because all he has to do is play a few really strong engines and I can't win the round. Get these panthers going. Villa will never get buffed? No, I just want it to get reworked. I don't, it, like... Right, something like boost three different units in your hand by plus one, three charges, each refresh over each round. Or I guess one charge, refresh each round. We'll never lay down our arms. <laughs> That's pretty good. Boost an unboosted unit in your hand by one six charges. That's terrible. That's worse than it is right now. Pumpkin is my emperor and my face is his throne. How much is this? 7, 18, 19, 20, 22, 33. Not enough. Boost a unit in your hand chart by one charge eight. Okay, now we're talking. But you can see that that's potentially problematic with Skags. And even then, eh, I don't even know if I'd play that. What do you think about hand and deck? It'd be too strong. He'd have to go down to like 8p or something. You can call skags. Five. Poison, poison, poison. We can leader poison. So I'm not pulling dragon. Dragon's not that important against, against Meave. I suppose. Okay. All right, we have a game plan. The waters of Brokilon, so we're leadering for poison whenever we need it. And we're calling for skags. All right, good plan, I like. Put this on the lowest unit. Would leader copying enemy leader ability be shit? Well, yeah, obviously. Because you can't bank on it. It's just RNG. It's just a worse usurper. Denying your opponent's leader is much better than copying your opponent's leader. Like, yeah, sure, there's a scenario where, like, you high roll a very specific leader and it's super good, but, like, more often than not, it's just gonna be shit, right? Bellavandro rework cries and elf sounds. Please change music or I'm gonna cry. Ay ay ay. Why? Oh, cause it's shoop. That's unfortunate, but it's okay. I can just lead her for dragon now. We have this and this. Yeah, so it's a shoop deck. Your next 
move shall be your last! So he's not a drog deck, otherwise he went to play the shoop here, because you can cap now. Do I care about a reset? Nope. Wait, I can double poison. Oh shit. I can still double poison. That's insane. Is that good? Double poisoning this is worth 9 versus dragon is worth 8. Nah, double poison's not worth it. We're just gonna stick to my game plan, which is this, into this, onto here, pop the seven, save one point, slap the dragon, clap our hands. We save a point because this hits this and saves on vitality. I don't know, we're up 30 points. Nice. Nice.